bringing the country music festival here in Iran. It's wonderful. Fantastic. We're having the best time. We really are. Yeah, it's always I, a surprise. I just wish I it was a little warmer, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, no, it's always a surprise that country music is so revered here in France. You know, so it's the first time I came was how many years ago? Sixteen years ago? Something like oh, that. Oh, more. And yeah. I was like, really a country music yeah. festival? And it's been going on now twenty-one years, and, uh, and it keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. From our friends, like, what are you doing, country music in France? Yeah. I know. And, and we, I we've all been here. This is our third time for each one. Each of Each one of us. Yeah. yeah. You have any best memory from that? Like from coming here? My They're best memory all. was my first one, and the dress. You see how beautiful the dressing room building is. The dressing room building was a trailer house the size of this circle, <laughs> a tiny one, and it had a chair and a little table and a tiny door. You open up, and there was a toilet in there, <laughs> and that's where we sat. And if you went it's outside, you could way. sit at a little tiny table outside, and that was it. That was the country music festival in 1997. So this is fantastic. This is Huge! Did you see the solar panels and everything? We actually haven't been in um, that much. Oh my God! Have right, have to see right. On top of the roof, as Sun you look Stadium, out, right, yeah. right behind us, the entire roof of everything here is solar panels. Yeah. And Larry Hagman was a, an instrumental person in having those solar panels on that roof. So it's very and helping it's very with nice the design. Here. Yeah. Yeah. I think this is one of my favorite times right now. Just, just, <laughs> yeah, it just is. being here, having a chance to talk to you and everybody at the Ultimate Dallas. And they had a balloon lift off here. I know you can cut yeah, away to this in a few minutes. But we're sitting at a position right now where we can just it's look up and watch these incredible colorful the balloons. Hot air balloons. Hot air balloons, balloons lifting off. So it's just beautiful. beautiful. Of course, this is all country music here. Yeah. Uh, what kind of music do you, do you normally listen to? Do you have any favorite artists? Would you know when this I like Tarkovsky and uh, a few other classical guys. Well, uh, this is not all country music, by the way. Okay. It's country, have, it, swing, it, it, it's rock swing, and roll, rock and roll, bluegrass. There's there's mm -hmm. some yeah, uh, well-known French uh, vocalists that are here tonight, uh, and I think it's just about music and a country setting, and it is not just strictly country music. That's what makes it a lot of fun and very appealing. Mm -hmm. It's true, appeals to everyone because universal uh, language is music. So I feel that anybody, no matter what your language, you can. Uh, be moved by the music you hear. And my wife said, and I agree with her, that, that, that she likes good music. Yeah. <laughs> good music. And there's good music of every genre, and yes, there, there is, is terrible music of every, every genre. genre. And yeah, since we're talking about music, um, Patrick, do you remember? Don't pull out that Marie Mathieu album. Uh, uh, <laughs> Don't you pull out that Marie Mathieu song. Unfortunately. <laughs> oh, yes, we want to see it again and again. <laughs> Yes, that was, uh, coincidentally, that was the beginning and ending of my music career. <laughs> Thank God. Both at the same time. <laughs> Both at the yeah, same and time. And if you've ever listened to it, you know why. I listened to it several times, I know the lyrics. Oh, you know Ooh. the lyrics. Uh -oh. Yes. oh, dear. Wow. You want to sing along? No. Mm, oh. No, she no. doesn't. <laughs> I should make her sing it, but I don't remember it, to be quite honest. But I, the two songs were, um, Together We're Strong. Yes, and something's going on. And something's going on, yes. And Marie Mathieu, I must say, she's a very famous, very, very famous French singer. And uh, the only reason that she wanted to do that album was because of the success of the show. It was not because I had any musical talent whatsoever. So it was a one-off, uh, sort of a, uh, not a joke, that wasn't the point, but a, a, for the, just the purpose of marrying a great singer to a great television show. And that's why we did it's it. it's kind of like one of those things that comes with the territory. You try it, and yeah. you don't know how it's going to turn out. <laughs> like Patrick and I raced in a on a road race once. Well, that didn't work out either. We, we both crashed. We both crashed. crashed. We were the yeah. worst drivers in the world. Yeah, we were the worst drivers in the world. So, but hey, it was fun. It was you know, it was about it's Dallas. It's an adventure. Yeah, it was an adventure. We were singing a song. I didn't know that. Yeah, you sing this "Who Killed Jock Ewing." Yeah, I'm a, I had a, I had a, I'm a one album star also. <laughs> oh, you did I, it I too. Had a, I had a who, a "Who Killed Jock Ewing" on a, on a Dallas album. What? Oh, too big for my my. Good. I wish yeah. I could have brought that instead. But. Did yeah. you have your Howard photograph? Keel, Howard Keel was in the album, though, and Johnny Lee and Crystal yeah. Gale oh. and other uh, Warner Brothers recording, oh, Western okay. recording artists, and Jenny Lee. Jen oh. Wow, Jenny, Jenny Lee, Lee, Lee had a voice. Yeah. That's but true. I did not have a voice. Learned What's your picture new? on the cover? It was on there someplace. Oh, yeah, it, was, it was big. <laughs> I thought I had yeah. something up on it. I got uh, 25 cents as a residual one. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. good. <laughs> nice. Good question. Okay, seven. 
can we talk about New Dallas for a bit? Absolutely. Like we have all very exciting. You just uh, lay out for a minute. Okay, Shereen. I'll watch the balloons. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big fan, so you can't. Uh... You might just <laughs> chip in here. Huh? <laughs> yes. How do you feel that the dynamic or the feel of the show will change now that uh, Larry Hagman and Jr. is no longer there? Do you think it will impact the show? Well, we, you know, of, of course it was a concern because he was, you know, he was at the center of it all. Um, but his presence is is always there. And uh, Patrick said it beautifully. He said, this is, we looked at it as season 14 as we came along, and then it just keeps going on. So we, it didn't feel like we had stopped ever, even though there was a 20 year gap. Uh, and the new cast is wonderful, they're talented, they're dedicated, they're thrilled to be on the show. So, you know, it just has flowed beautifully. So it doesn't, uh, doesn't seem like it's been a 20 year. I know the quality of the show has not changed. Larry died, you know, midway through the season, um, and they had to really scramble to make new episodes out of the original episodes and keep the storyline going, but still incorporate the fact that he was no longer with us. Uh, the stories actually got better. The writing actually improved. And if Larry were sitting here now, he'd be very proud of the fact that he actually made the show better, you know, by just something that he did. So this will be the, the pivotal year. Yeah. The, the audience will decide whether they want to watch Dallas without the character of JR on screen because certainly you know they're going to invent things that the character of JR did and those things will surface <laughs> episode after episode yeah. after episode his legacy continues yes uh, he mm -hmm. did business deals we haven't even heard of yet <laughs> and we all have to pay the price for those so yeah. the character will maintain his presence in the show Larry as an entity just as a person uh, we can't get rid of that. It's part of our genetic makeup as actors on the show. We carry part of Larry Hagman as JR with us every time we step on camera. So I think the audience feels that. They feel our affection. They feel the show's affection towards him. And I think that will bring them along with us as we redefine Dallas a little bit without the character of JR. Well, good. What can we expect from your characters in the first season? Well, you know, obviously, I adored working with Larry Hagman. Uh, I thought he was a consummate actor. Um, it, there was a magic from the first show ever uh, between the two of us. And um, I liken it to a game of ping pong. Y you know, it was fast. And when we started working, there was some kind of wonderful chemistry that happened. I never knew what he was going to do, and he never knew what I was going to do. So you could feel the sparks fly. And you could feel the love there. You could feel all the emotions that we went through. Um, I think the audience felt. So yes, it's so sad that I think the writers had uh, planned that the end of season two, that we were going, they were going to have a scene where Jr. and Swillen went into a bedroom and the door shut, and that was the end. Uh, but that never happened. So you, it was going to leave the audience thinking that maybe they would get back together again. But Larry decided to leave early and that door shut in a different way. So um, that was sad, of course, for me because I lost my, my friend. I lost my best friend. I got, a, I got Patrick, but you know, I, on, on camera there was, um, he was my partner. So that was, um, that was, uh, that was hard, but it will continue. And uh, so I feel that his presence, like Patrick said beautifully, his presence is always there. I have a feeling she, Sue Ellen's going to do a lot of talking to a photograph of Jr. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did in the in the scene that was so beautiful. You did. You, you I, know, I did. He yeah, was there. yeah, yeah. So I, I have a feeling yeah. there'll be photographs there be... of him everywhere we turn on that show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so we'll do whatever they, they uh, write for us, we'll do. But uh, I know that they will keep his, uh, his memory alive. Uh, I would like to ask uh, Cherie. Yes. Um, with Dallas returning, are you disappointed that your character was killed off in the old show? Note to self, never ask to be killed off, <laughs> which I did. You did. I was pregnant with my first child. I knew it was the last year. I decided it would be great to go out in grand fashion, nothing like, you know, just slowly dissolving or disappearing. So of course they machine gunned me down on my honeymoon with Bobby and I went out in grand fashion. <laughs> and then who would 
believe that 20 years later it's it's back and as great and as wonderful as it was I mean I'm completely addicted to the show I'm the, the biggest fan these are my favorite people and I love them dearly and um, we love you yes uh, you know, um, did you learn if I could from Bobby's demise in the show <laughs> well I thought I could come back in the shower mistake. and it, hey my shower scene could have been a little more interesting. <laughs> I, I watched it. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> if you hadn't died, where would you see April today? Oh, if I hadn't died, where would April be I today? Be we would be married. And we because be married. we had, well, I, I kind of haunted you in your dreams with yeah. a, a child. Actually, when my son was born, we wrapped him in a pink blanket, and that was Bobby and April's baby yeah, <laughs> that he was dreaming about. And Aww. so, no, we probably we would be still married. We'd be the yeah, uh, Bobby does not make no. unsuccessful marriages. I, th I mean, you have to consider Pam an unsuccessful marriage, but that's because she was pig stick nutty. But, <laughs> uh, I, you know, he, he always <laughs> makes good choices in his in his thing. So I think with oh, our being you. married. On the show. Why would I leave not, Bobby? I mean, I wouldn't. Yeah, of course, he wouldn't, he would wouldn't not. leave April. So I think no. we would have, we would have been the successful marriage for the next thing. So. I agree. You have to mention Pam, though. Yes. Like last season, viewers thought she was going to come back. Exactly. What's your thoughts about that whole thing? How it was played out? Well, you know, it was actually Victoria's call. Um, I don't know if uh, you know the ultimate Dallas was aware of the. She wrote a letter actual uh, made a sort of a public statement declaration about why she wasn't returning to the show so uh, it, you know, it was ultimately ultimate Dallas it was ultimately <laughs> her choice not to come back I don't think the offer was made but again our producers have always said that any character who is still alive and any actor who is still alive that played a character is open game for coming back on the show. They want to make this show As reminiscent authentic. of the original show and of this period. So her potential was there to come back as a character. And it was ultimately her decision not to. What would it mean for you to, to be nominated? And uh, what do you think of Larry Hackman also being submitted for the nomination? Um, we've always, always talked about Dallas uh, not winning Emmys. Um, it's, it, it really isn't an Emmy kind of show. Miss Ellie did win an Emmy for her beautiful work. Um, but I don't, think, I don't think we're about Emmys. I think we're about doing good work and um, those kinds of things. Uh, I mean, obviously they matter in the business, but not so much to us. And, and I think if, I was shocked that Larry Hagman had never been nominated, yeah, that, ever. That, that is the shocking yeah. thing, that the yeah. show and that many of the actors never received awards. It was all political. So I think in reverse order, it's great that Larry, you know, has made the yeah. first yeah. stage in yeah, that. That's mm -hmm. And I think it would be fitting if he actually ended up if he, receiving if he received it. it. Uh, yeah. For the rest of us, it, yeah. it's always an honor to be nominated. You know, that's what they say, but it's actually true. It's, a, it's like having a successful show on the air. There just aren't many of them out there. There aren't many nominations and there's fewer winners. So it, to be included in either of those categories is yes, indeed an honor. Is it what we concentrate on? Judging from our history, we've said no. Uh, and, but judging from our his history, it doesn't take an Emmy to be successful. But sometimes an Emmy comes because of success. So if that happens, we're grateful. I think you both should win Emmys. I'm sure people, four of you should. Like, Just for the best dead person. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I got how cute she is. She's so pretty. <laughs> what are your memories of filming the episode when, uh, like, your funeral? Mm. You three were part of that. Well, I was very pleased to be asked back on the show again. I, I come in occasionally as a guest star now, and it's always very enjoyable. Uh, it was an opportunity for me to really kind of come to terms with Larry's passing. I, I had gone to two of his uh, memorial services, uh, celebrations of life in Los Angeles, and they were both nice, but they didn't mean anything to me compared to like playing those moments at his graveside in character in Dallas. I mean, to me, that was that was it. And that was, I mentioned to Patrick earlier, uh, that was nine pages of uh, script that was performed in a way by the actors that I've never seen done on any other show in my 40 years in the business, uh, flawlessly. We had to stop one time for an airplane for Linda in like the three takes that we did, basically. That was yeah. it. And uh, so I was very... Uh, 
privileged, I think, to, to, be, to have the opportunity. I think that the, the memorial show was a way for the audience to say goodbye, yeah. for them to grieve, to come to the funeral, and to mourn him as a real life human being and as the character. So I think they beautifully uh, incorporated all of those feelings, those moments were special. Well written. When I yeah. did those scenes, those are the moments that I was acting. I don't want to make that sound the wrong way. It's because every time I think of Larry, literally every time I think of Larry, I have to fight a smile coming on my face. I have to fight thinking of one of the 10 billion funny, wonderful things that he did every time I was around him. So whenever I think of Larry, I'm not sad, and I'm not anything. I'm enriched by the memory of him. So being in those scenes, both that scene and the scene at the end of the show that Linda and I did, that where, where there, our characters were coming to grips with it, those were the scenes where I was really acting because I, had, I was telling myself, oh, you have to remember him in a very sad way. You can't remember him the way that you remember Haggy, you know? And I'm thinking of Haggy, and I'm going, no, no, that's your brother JR, it's not Haggy. So now we have to get back into character. So it was an interesting thing to do. It was emotional, but I was one step removed from what I really feel about him as a person, and even about his death. Uh, I feel very, I think it was a victorious, joyful death. And that's the way I look at it. And there's nothing negative about it. So I always have a smile on my face. I say, oh, no, no, we're being serious now. Okay, we have to cut that out. <laughs> Well, we hope so because I'm on the courtroom floor. They need to get me off the I know. floor. It ended oh, that was the cliffhanger. That was the cliffhanger. The cliffhanger with CBS, and then they stopped doing movies of the week. So we would love to just have one more MOW, <laughs> one more chance <laughs> with a happy ending. That's true. Riding off in the sunset. Okay. Any messages for the fans, though? Keep watching. No, keep watching. <laughs> hope you enjoy the new one. Yeah. We do. <laughs> Tell them you want to see Ray Krebs back on TV. <laughs> yeah, we do. We definitely We do. We do. Uh, sorry. I still haunt you in your dreams. <laughs>